Kiwi is a Hungarian brand taken over by a Chinese company brought into the country by Adeshwar Auto Ride India. Now that brand is responsible for maintaining Benelli in the country and also getting multiple offerings like Motomorini and Zontes. So now they have also got Kiwi into the country and today we have this, the Kiwi K300R. Hello and welcome to the Drivers Hub. I'm Kiran and I'm here to let you know whether this is an ideal pick as your first bike or is it a tad bit late in the market? Let's find out. So when it comes to the looks, there are a few bits I like and then there are the bits I don't. Now for the things what I like is, well the headlight looks nice, it's taken its cues from the CBR 650R and the fire blade and all of that and it's quite bright and even night time the light throw is sufficient. Now when it comes to the side, typical super sport design, you know the fairings and etc, there are cuts, creases everywhere but just does the job. There is nothing extra specially done for aerodynamics and etc. Now mind you, this bike has also been designed by the same team who is responsible for designing the newer generation KTM RC390. So well, you can see somewhat in the silhouette. The rear end is taken from an R15 but it's slightly bulky, it's like it's out of proportion. So the tire looks kind of puny as if you know, you skipped leg days. So it's like that. But Otherwise, overall looks quite decent, LED lighting front, LED lighting in the rear, indicators are also LED, the mirrors is something I like a lot because they are quite huge and they let you see whatever is there on the back. So whenever you want to filter through traffic, you have a good view both in the front and the back. So yeah, that's about it. The windshield I don't like, it's too short, even for a guy like me, the wind blast is straight on my face and if you do over 150-200 km in a stretch, you will feel the stress on your head and on your shoulders just because of the wind blast. Otherwise, a very decent looking bike, a fresh looking bike which does not look similar to its competitors but also has cues from them. Now when it comes to the engine, it's borrowed from the KTM family so it will get similar components from the RC390, 200, 250 but again instead of giving them the same engine directly from the family what they have done is they have changed the bore to a 300cc so what it does is it gives this bike 27 bhp and around 25 newton meters of torque now that is awfully similar to the duke 250 the cvr 250r which is discontinued and well if we go actually to the competition which is you know the 250cc segment the suzuki jixxers or the cb 300f might come close to the performance that this bike is offering now otherwise it's a quite tractable motor, the clutch is light, you need only your finger to use it, the gearbox is slick but it does not like shifting again and again on lower RPMs, that's when the gear shifter kind of rebounds up. Now that is also because it's set kind of awkwardly, I'll come to that later. But otherwise the engine is quite smooth, it has the standard KTM vibrations, on idle it's quite buzzy but as you go around 3-4 thousand RPM it goes mellow and then maybe around 6500 RPM the vibes start creeping up back in. So overall a decent motor, fuel economy wise right now I'm getting maybe around 20 to 25 but again I was full gas all the time. So if we get the bike for a longer time, we can comment on the fuel economy. But otherwise, a decent motor, good fun, quite a peppy motor and loves to rev a lot. Now swing your leg over the bike and you can immediately see how comfortable it is. And also you're not sitting on the bike like the KTM RC or the R15. You are sitting in the bike like a CBR 250 
and uh, well it's quite comfortable the seat is huge so there's a lot of room to move around and play with especially if you want to position yourself properly in the corners the tank is nice and narrow but then again that also makes sense because the fuel capacity is only 12 liters and uh, when you're sitting on the bike you realize how narrow this bike is so even maneuvering through traffic is easy but one thing comes in the way are these mirrors now there's a plus point that is it gives you a proper view of what's happening behind you don't need extra blind side mirrors or etc the downside is your filtering clearance is slightly hampered because of the mirrors so otherwise quite reachable nice the levers are properly set they are not too aggressive not too up and uh, well the foot pegs well they are slightly awkward i feel they're slightly more rear set and higher so other than having like normal wrist pains which you will get in a committed motorcycle i was facing some knee pains and ankle pains just because this and uh, the levers are also placed awkwardly they're slightly raised so every time you have to either lift your leg if you want to brake in hard or shift in gears immediately or just try to adjust and play around with your ankle so that is slightly ras but uh, overall a very comfortable bike the windshield is short so even when you're tucking in you can see that the wind will directly hit the top of your head and your helmet so even this said i wish they had better aerodynamics maybe a uh, maybe double bubble windshield or something might help and do the job so now we've talked about the looks and the engine now with the equipment that this bike comes with honestly no, there's nothing much really like you get a standard lcd display with a odometer a single trip meter a battery voltage uh, meter well okay and uh, well a gear shift indicator or something of some sort but uh, the gear shifter never goes above second gear so like the indicator never goes over second gear so i don't know what's that for and uh, that's about it it also gets a sport and economy mode button which does absolutely nothing when we used it uh, brakes are unbranded it has abs but that is very intrusive the brake bite it does the job like i've been spoiled by amazing bikes so the past few weeks and months which have phenomenal braking response and this just doesn't cut it like in fact the rc's brake if i had to compare with this is way sharper even a tvs sapachara triton would have a better braking than this bike has like it does the job it will make sure that you stop but you will have to calculate almost every time which is kind of annoying so yeah that's that and you get cst tires they are made in china they perform okay like they need to warm up but once they are warm they do the job but if there is some amount of sudden gravel or debris or something do not expect it to grip the kiwi 300r is a pleasant motorcycle to ride the suspension is set not too aggressively not too soft so it absorbs the bumps and when you ride aggressively it holds on to the line and the feedback is enough now also when you're in a corner and you have to put in some effort to pick it up and then take it to another corner but that is okay that is all what adds up to the riding experience well the tires did perform quite decently and the brakes well like i said you have to calculate your braking distance and etc that in turn also allows you to adjust yourself according to the suspension so overall you can glide over small bumps and potholes and bad patches of road without worrying about your fork seals being busted so mid corner the performance is quite good and well if you gear it out right you will have really a lot of fun in the corners the engine is quite sorted like i've said and paired it with some better braking components and also the tires and you will have a lot of fun on the corners so overall it's a decently made motorcycle it looks the part it certainly does the job also if you want to go seriously into uh, corner craving and etc but there are a few bits you will have to look into if you are really really considering this motorcycle first and foremost are the braking components you will have to upgrade the brake pads but that will not do the job what you will also need is a brake rotor upgrade and also a master kit along with the brake lines now even if you don't do the rotor the master kit and the brake lines uh, steel braided brake lines 
should do from the KTM 390 because that has a sufficient uh, bite and a very good response. I have put that on multiple motorcycles, so that does the job. And also the tires, the tires need to go away. Even with decent MRFs that come with the RC 200, the bike can go so much more faster and perform so much more better on the corners. That makes me want to know how this would perform with better tires, let's say standard Metzelers or even Michelin PSRs. So it has potential, it's great in some aspects, but in some aspects I can't understand why they have cut down corners. Like the fit and finish, the panel gap is uniform everywhere, but there are certain places like you see this gap over here under the seat, the gap over here between the seats and few other places everywhere, you know, the panels just stick out, you see the difference. And for someone who likes neat and clean and you know something that's just uniform and put in nicely, it's annoying. So overall, well-built motorcycle, you need to do some mods to it if you really want to get the most out of it. That's about it. Let me know in the comments down below what do you think about this motorcycle. Would you go for one? Because priced at almost 3 lakh rupees X showroom, it makes you want to consider whether to go for this or maybe for the fraction of the price, you can buy something else in the used market. So that's it from my side. This is the Kiwi K300R. Let me know in the comments down below what do you think of this motorcycle. Would you go for it at 3 lakh rupees sex showroom or go for something that's way cheaper in the used market. Until then, please do the needful. Like, share, subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Ciao.